What is going on, everybody? My name is Chris. I'm here down in the Seacrest Studios. And guess what? It's a little early this morning, and I'm going to tell you why. Because we have a friend on the line right now. Uh, Maya, are you there? Yeah, hi. Yeah, yeah. hey, happy early Thursday morning. And we're here early for a very special reason. Why, why are we on the line right now? Um, because Seth Myers is calling in. We got Seth Myers on the show with Maya. How amazing, Seth. Thanks for being here. Maya, take it away, girl. Okay, so first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for calling in. I'm so excited to be talking with you, and I really can't tell you how much this means to me. So, Maya, that means so much to hear. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, so my first question for you is, how did you discover your love of comedy? Well, I was lucky. My parents let us watch comedy when we were little. So my brother and I would watch not just things like Bugs Bunny cartoons that we all thought were funny, but then we started watching The Simpsons together as a family. We would watch Saturday Night Live on Sunday morning because my parents would let us record it. And I just liked laughing with my parents. And then once I started doing things that made my parents laugh, I thought, hey, I might be funny, too. And it turned out that maybe, maybe I was right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. Um, so you were a writer for SNL and hosted Weekend Update. Um, what was your favorite sketch that you wrote? Oh, that's a really good question. I mean, my favorite thing to do was Weekend Update with my friend, Amy Poehler. We had so much fun together and it was an absolute delight to be with her. And as far as my favorite thing that I ever wrote, I wrote a prank show once called Pranksters and I was the host of the show. And Christopher Walken was an older man who was a guest on the show and his prank was very inappropriate. And that was probably my favorite one to do. Cool. Um, did you have a favorite weekend update that you did? Well, I always enjoyed when my friend Bill Hader stopped by as Stefan. That was a very funny character and the audience would lose their minds when he showed up. And I also loved every time Kate McKinnon came out and did anything. She never failed to make me laugh, but it was a great time. I worked there with so many funny people. And the fact that I got to call them, not just my colleagues, but my friends was the best. Oh, cool. Um, so what is the best part of hosting your late night show, Late Night with Seth Meyers? I think the best part is the guests I get to talk to every night. We do a lot of writing and we write a monologue and and then we write some other comedy pieces. And obviously writing comedy is a lot harder than it looks. And so it's a stressful day. But once we do that part of the show and it's just me sitting with people that I respect or make me laugh or I think are interesting, that part doesn't feel like work at all. Oh, cool. Um, so what is the most challenging part of posting? I think just making sure you have the right energy and enthusiasm every night when you start the show. I mean, obviously, there are some days where you feel under the weather or some days where you're maybe a little depressed and you know you have to go out and do the show. And the nicest part about having a live audience again, which we didn't have for a long time because of the pandemic, is when you walk out and you are lucky enough to be in a room full of people who are excited to see your show, that brings your energy level up to where it needs to be. Oh, cool. Um, so if you had to wake up to one song every day for the next month, what song would it be? Oh, no, I'm so worried I'm going to say a song as an old man that you don't even know, Maya. Can I just say the real answer? And will you pretend to know the song I'm talking about? Yes. OK, probably Born to Run by Bruce Springsteen. I do know that song. OK, thank you. I, you, I, yeah. you, I, I think you're being honest and I really appreciate your honesty. Maya. I, I am. Yes, I love Bruce Springsteen. OK, good. Yeah, I think Born to Run is a great 
walk out the door in the morning song. Yeah. Um, yeah. My mom plays Bruce Springsteen and Billy Joel all the time. So my sister and I, like, those are two artists we grew up listening to. So that's good. Now, wait, if I want a younger wake up in the morning song, what's your song, Maya? If I want to try something new right now, I well, I love a song called Pasta by the band New Rules. OK. Um, anything by the band Inhaler. And then there's a new song called Objectified by an artist named Sophie Freer. OK, I'm writing all these down. Thank you yeah. very much. This is great. <laughs> yeah, that I, I love that one. So. All right. This has been very helpful. See all this important information I'm getting from you, Maya. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what is the best piece of advice that you got when you first started out in the business? The best piece of advice I got is write the things that you believe are funny. If you try to write the things that you think other people would think are funny, you'll get too far away from your true self. So the idea is always to put your heart, put your soul into the things you believe in. And if you do that, the audience will agree. Cool. Um, so um, how do you uh, prepare for your stand-up? Is it a different process than your other projects? Yeah, very much so. I mean, one thing about doing a late night show is you do a show every night and then you just move on to the next day. Whereas with stand-up, the idea is in order to build an hour, you just work it over and over again and you just refine the same joke until you're sure it's going to work every time you do it. So for me, it's a nice thing to have on the side to just be writing and rewriting and knowing that every time I take it on stage, I can hopefully do it a little bit better than the last time until it's in a place that you're proud to show it to anyone. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, what do you do to cheer yourself up when you're having a bad day? I know that my kids can always cheer me up. They don't they don't care much about whether or not it was a good show or a bad show. They're just always my kids. And so it's really nice to know that I can I can come home to them and, and get to see them. Oh, cool. Um, so what advice would you give to someone chasing their dreams? Here's the thing. And I'm glad that a lot of young people are listening. It's important to try a lot of things when you're young, because when you try things, you're going to fail a lot of the time. And failure is a lot easier to process when you're younger and you learn a lot from it. So I would just say, face the things you're afraid of take them on, take them head on, and just know that even if it doesn't work out the way you want it to work out, you're going to learn something from the experience. And that's going to be essential when the time comes for you to try again. Yeah, I like that advice. (laughs) All right, good. I'm glad. You're very good at, you're a very good interviewer, Maya. By the way, you're obviously, this isn't your first time out. How many interviews have you done now, Maya? Um, You are my, I think it's, 249th interview. See, I would have guessed at least 250. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, is there a line from a movie, book, or a song that's always stuck with you? Oh, wow. What a good question. Um. I don't know off the top of my head. I guess I think about the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail all the time. It's maybe the movie I think that's funniest. And I watched it with my dad one day when I was homesick from school. And it's one of my favorite 
movie watching experiences in my life because the two of us were laughing so hard. But uh, there's a scene where uh, the Black Knight says uh, it's merely a flesh wound. And I think about that all the time. Oh, oh cool. Yeah. Um, so uh, is there a show that you're currently obsessed with? Is there a show that I am currently obsessed with? I would say right now, I'm trying to think of the last show we watched that we loved. And I understand this answer is we really enjoyed the last season of Curb Your Enthusiasm, my wife and I. We love Larry David. He makes us laugh a lot. So that was probably the last show we were obsessed with. And I also, I know it's been a long time since I worked there but I am still obsessed with Saturday Night Live. I'll never be bored watching that show. Oh, cool. Um, it, so uh, my last question for you is, who do you consider to be a real life superhero and why? Well, I guess it's probably with no second place, no close second place, at least my wife. I have this incredible wife who has now given birth to three amazing kids. And our second kid, which is something I talked about in my stand-up special, she delivered in the lobby of our apartment building because on our way to the car to go to the hospital, the baby came early. And when you watch a woman lie on her back in an apartment lobby, and deliver a baby all by herself, you definitely think that is a real life superhero right there. Yeah. Um, I, so I love your stand up uh, special on Netflix. I watch that a lot. And when you told that story, I was like, okay, she is my new superhero. <laughs> well, um, I cannot wait to go home and tell her that, Maya. She will be thrilled to hear it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, so I, it still hasn't sunk in that I'm actually talking with you. So I'm sure later I will just kind of start screaming. <laughs> I can't believe I talked to him. Um, but thank you so much for calling in. I can't tell you what the dream come true this is. So thank you. Maya, you have made my day. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you to all of your listeners as well. Thank you. Thank you, Seth.